uh, in these past few games. Definitely after I've seen, a, um, yeah. After some slow starts, we're seeing very, very fast play here from the highest level of competitive play at the moment in Tooth and Tail. We have going to game four. Zenith to the south as green. Zeno Akup to the north. East, not east, as red. And a very a large, yeah. very large map this time. Um, with a very. nice tower base in the middle. Uh, both players have access to expansions. Uh, but Zeno Coop definitely has the advantage in terms of further expansions. With all these expansions over to the uh, north and west that are blocked off, you have to go through Zeno Coop's main base to get to them. Unless I'm missing a small ramp here, which doesn't look like I am. No, no, you're right. So, Zenith definitely has the worst side of the map. Zeno can um, expand whenever, wherever he wants, whereas Zenith, his expansion is going to be very uh, open to attack. Unless he can get a forward one to set up. Zeno going up to eight farms before building any warrens. Zenith also going for the same, both going for a slower game this time around. They've had their cheese fun, and now they're going to try and push out into the longer games. It's definitely the map to do it. That large map with high ground in the middle is going to be difficult to try and force your way over in the beginning of the game. Zenith throwing down his first two Squirrel Warrens, you know, doing the same. I'm surprised. Uh, one of Zenith's favorite strategies that I've seen is to choose a base in the corner of the map as an expansion early on and just kind of keep burrowing and filling it out every once in a while. But it could be that it could be that Zeno Akoop is just too good at scouting for that to work. Yeah, it's a very risky play, very all or nothing, and against such a um, an experienced player as Zeno, or just a powerful player, he can um, he can expect that that'll be scouted. All right, and Zeno has read this map and seen that he's going to have the long-term economic advantage. He's thrown out some barbed wire to try and protect that high ground, and thus taken control of this high ground. He's going to have an advantage there now. Zenith also grabbing an expansion, perhaps in preparation of a longer game. Because it would be not a good idea to assault through that barbed wire onto the high ground, especially with Toads out now for Zeno Akub. Going back to two metas ago, and for a build that he used to do all the time, which was Squirrel Toad and Barbed Wire, the only thing that would make this complete would be some Hawks. But Hawks getting that HP nerf recently down to 15 from 20 health. They're not quite as good as they used to be. Yeah. Zeno picking up his first tier 2 warrant, going for Chameleons. Zenith also dropped it way earlier, so Zenith's already on 2 Chameleons. Zenith, can take out that Zenith again, just a little bit ahead in economy. Or not quite, I apologize. It looks like Zeno's beginning him out a little bit earlier. They're pretty much even. But that's impressive for Zeno having two barbed wire uh, pieces down. And Zenith not scouting that expansion until it was already built. I think Zeno has a slight advantage here, seeing as uh, Zenith would have to go through the barbed wire to push through. Now, especially with all these expansions in the north and west of the map locked down by Zeno, his army's there, which means that the only other expansion Zenith can take is right in front of this high ground, right here. So Zenith's gonna it's fill out. Impossible. Zenith's gonna fill out this base as quick as he can, because he's gonna start to. Oh, and Zeno's just gonna go ahead and buy that expansion, which means that Zenith either has to sneak his way by the army somehow. There is through. a little, tiny little ramp there, there as is. Zenith is pointing out right there. He has seen it. But he can't actually get up there, I don't think. I can't really tell. He does have pigeons out and throwing down five moles at one time. Let's see if he decides to push through that back door, push through the front. I think he knows that he has to end it quickly. And look yeah, at the amount of... Yeah, before Zeno gets that economic advantage. Up to three uh, windmills right now. And just... He's gonna push right through the front door. This is gonna be rough. Zenith on 300 food right now. It's fairly even uh, armies here. And those, those toads get some pretty good hits. I think the, the moles tanked a lot of them though. Five moles there. And Zenith is coming out ahead in this. All of the chameleons are dead. One farm is down. Wow. 
two farms are down. Ooh. Those toads managed to get a couple of good hits though, and Zenith's going to have to back off. He hasn't got any moles anymore, so he doesn't really have much of an advantage. Zenith's on 500 food though. Wow. Alright, throwing down three chameleon warrens. <laughs> I don't know whether that was ah. intentional or a little bit of food mismanagement here. There are a lot of nerves going on. This is the fourth match of the Grand Finals. So perhaps just losing sight of your food values in the middle of a very intense battle, which is totally understandable. I think all of us would do the same, if not more. Definitely. Zeno going up to nine toads, nine squirrels, and four chameleons, whereas Zenith has 18 squirrels coming up and Eight chameleons. And a sniper He's balloon. Got a sniper balloon. Going up for Zenith. That's very smart. Look at all the visibility that gives him. He's going to try and bait Zeno Akoop's army out of the protection of the barbed wire. Oh, and these chameleons are just going to keep po poking that barbed wire. Thanks to those pigeons. They wow. can just heal up immediately afterwards. Look at that. One shotting that barbed wire. Doing 32 damage in one oh, here hit. Here we go. Here's the next fight. Oh, the toads get some insane connections there, taking That's out all these chameleons. It's a lot of toads, but now we have that oh, Zeno. sniper balloon. It's just going to keep firing away and taking out squirrel after squirrel. He needs to pull back now. He's he's already won the fight. He doesn't want to lose much more. Two chameleons back out for Zenith. This is a very, very close match. Twelve farms to nine. Again, those farms are starting to farm out, so Zenith has to take an expansion. It's going to be, have to be this expansion Ooh. if he wants to stay ahead. Zenith is going to take out most of it. Using those pigeons to see on the high ground to try and take out some farms, but his army is now cut in half here. That sniper balloon is still taking out one unit at a time. Chameleons are There's doing their so work. Many chameleons. But that's a lot of squirrels to try and deal with. Ooh. And he's outside of the range of the sniper balloon now, just on the very edges. One farm going down. Wow. And GG. Gino picks up game four. Wow. Two to two. And look at how back really and forth that game. was. That pushed twice yeah. the army value. But I think Zeno just pulling ahead in terms of economy. It was those toads, I'm telling you. Those toads, they managed to get in there. And yeah, the moles managed to tank up a lot of the shots. And after after the toad, uh, after the moles went down, though, the toads that came in reinforcing could just sweep up the rest of the army. Yeah. That sniper balloon, really paid off that sniper balloon definitely helped a little bit, but it, the fight was just a little bit too far away for it to do as much damage as it needed to do. It was a very fast fight as well, and against those squirrels, uh, it can deal with them fast enough. <laughs> Zeno has lost track of the score. Jumping into the chat real quickly to check it out. <laughs> it's score two is to two to two. two. Zeno. I don't Still know. Still gonna win two more, mate. These players have a lot of focus and a